Hello, my regulars, and welcome new listeners to the Reese on the Regular podcast. I am so excited for this episode today. I have Dasha with me, guys. Hi, guys. I'm so excited to be here. I'm Dasha. I'm Reese's good friend from UMass, and I'm a year older than her. So I think we're going to talk about that today. Oh, yeah, (laughs) we are for sure. I am actually a body positive influencer online. Reese and I met kind of through Instagram at school. And during my time at UMass, I spoke a lot about my body positivity journey. I was really involved in women in business. I did have my own podcast for a long time and YouTube channel, which hoping to get back to in 2024. Yes. Um, So I think we're going to talk about all of it today. Yeah, I'm so excited. We're really going to focus on just life after college. This is one of my first podcasts where I'm more so just learning and interviewing versus having much to say on my own part. So I'm excited to learn a little bit. I think you guys are going to learn a lot and I just think this will be really good prep for anyone who's graduating soon or who's already graduated. Yeah, absolutely. And I plan on being super honest because I feel like (laughs) I wish someone was really brutally honest with me when I was wrapping up school. Yes, and I appreciate that. So I'm (laughs) really excited to get into this. So take everything that I say with a grain of salt, basically. (laughs) Let's just get right into it. So I'm curious, how are you dealing with the transition and coping from being in college for four years to now being in the real world? That's a great question. I think finally now, I graduated this past May from Eisenberg at UMass. And I think finally now I'm settling in and I could say that I'm okay. Like I can say that I'm feeling good. (laughs) It definitely wasn't that way at first, Mm -hmm. especially when I started my job. I was so down about it. And it's funny because there's I have friends who are still looking for jobs and things like that. And you'd think when you start working, you know, everything's going to be perfect and all this stuff. But I really struggled. Like right when I started working, I really felt not lit up by what I was doing, not lit up by like the life choices I had made. And the biggest thing was not having that picture perfect post-grad ending. Like Mm -hmm. we all want to believe that we're going to move out of college and get our first like big girl apartment and I'm going to decorate it and all that. (laughs) But sometimes that's not realistically what you can do right after school. And I think, you know, comparing yourself to people online, like it can be really tough. Like I struggled with that a lot I've been working since July and I also moved back home after college I am living at home with my mom and like my Mm -hmm. childhood house I can now say like I finally leveled out I love what I'm doing for my full-time job right now and I've really like found routine and balance so January what is it it's about to be January Mm -hmm. it's like six months yeah it takes time so it takes (laughs) some time and like what's your biggest tip for learning how to adjust all of that I think you gotta just like feel it and accept that you have no idea what the fuck it, like you're doing. Yeah. And everyone post-grad is going to feel this way. All of your friends, the ones who are working, the ones who are not working, the ones who had to stay home, the ones who moved out, grass is green, only where you water it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> One of my friends told me like the way to describe the post-grad feeling is being like a plant and being in this perfect cozy little pot and like you have everything you need, like all the water, all the sun, and then being put into a bigger pot after you graduate, right? So mm-hmm. it's like really uncomfortable, like kind of confusing like yeah it's very very weird and you're like just in a place you've never been before with no rules and so different than the past Mm -hmm. 20 years of your life like if you think about it you've been a student since you could talk right and then your whole identity is just like flipped around yeah like I feel like the only big transition I've had so far was like high school to college like that was a huge change but that's still like going to school like doing the same type of thing being surrounded by your friends Mm -hmm. and so I can only imagine like after college it's like now what type of feeling like did you ever feel that way yeah because at least in college or at least in high school most of us were planning on going to college and knew where we wanted to go and kind of knew what we wanted to major in now it's like nobody knows what's going on nobody has a trajectory everyone's allowed to go every which different direction you have no one to follow Mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of it but also it kind of gives you like decision paralysis yeah you don't know where to go like I could move across the country if I wanted to but is that what I want to do it's it's like that every day Mm -hmm. it just takes a while to like adjust to that and accept to this big open ocean you're put into it really is because you have so much freedom to like make your own decisions but it's about like making the right decision for yourself and 
really figuring out like what exactly you want your life to look like. Yeah, absolutely. And I can talk a little bit about what I do for work. Yeah. Right now I'm working as a business development rep, which is um, sales. And so if you've seen Sarah Pareto on TikTok, (laughs) if you've seen like any of that, that's what I do all day. So I'm cold calling most of the day, booking deals and meetings for my account executive. And I'm in the tech industry. So it's actually much more laid back yeah uh like sweatshirts on zoom like very (laughs) casual i really love it honestly and to give more context both my parents were entrepreneurs and i was doing really well with days with dasha and running my own business during college doing social media management and i never ever in a million years thought i would get a nine to five yeah ever (laughs) and it's so weird because it's so different right like all the friends you probably have in school are probably like thinking about their jobs, thinking about their nine to fives after. And my parents were so bothered that I got a job. Really? (laughs) And so everybody's, you know, path is kind of different. So that kind of contributed to my emotions at first. I was like, what am I doing? Like, this isn't my path. This isn't what I was meant to do. But the reason I stuck with it was I do have a knack for sales. I've really loved it. (laughs) And I'm gotten really good at it. That's so awesome. And I was fine to do it because I love the company I'm working at. And it gave me the flexibility and the opportunity to learn things. I didn't want to stick myself in a place where I wasn't learning anymore Mm -hmm. because that's what I loved about school. And that's what I loved about UMass, like constantly being challenged, constantly learning. And so that's why I kept the job and stuck through with it. And I've learned so much so much about the way that you speak to people the way that you sell things it's only been like six months yeah so sales teaches you a lot teaches you how to talk to people like so many real world things you learn yeah sales it's it's great it's so necessary yeah and you're in sales yeah so (laughs) like you know um I definitely think everyone who has the personality should work a sales job yeah it (laughs) it definitely has taught me some Difficult lessons. (laughs) It has. Rejection. (laughs) Now we know it. (laughs) If you've been hung up on by some random person in Missouri, you'll understand. (laughs) Get it. It definitely teaches you that resilience, but also Mm -hmm. that drive. Like, so what? A hundred people just hung up on you. You're going to make that hundred and one dial and get that deal, you know? So I just, I love it. I'm learning. And that was like my big objective post-grad. That's awesome. Yeah. I That's forget the exciting. question that you asked <laughs> I me know. when I started running on a tangent. <laughs> no, but I'm excited to hear what you were doing because I honestly had no idea. But that's yeah. awesome. You're yeah. in sales. I love it. <laughs> oh, I remember where I was going okay. with that. See, like crazy brain. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I also love the job is because I'm fully remote. Mm-hmm. And I have the option to go in, which I love. I live really close to the office. But the benefit of that is being able to travel the world and work from anywhere. So for example, I'm really excited. I haven't really told anyone about this, but my boyfriend and I got a house in Austin, Texas next month, and we're going to be working remotely from there. That is so cool. Yeah. And exploring a new city. And it's like, that's what I wanted. Like I always yes. just wanted to have adventure accessible to me and like, you know, be financially free and all of that. But I bring that up because it's so important when you see other friends getting an apartment that you've always wanted in the city, going out every weekend and, you know, doing different things. It's just post-grad, you have to prioritize like what you want to do and you can't, you have to like put blinders on to all your friends and kind of what everyone else is doing, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you mentioned you're living at home and you're working remotely. Mm -hmm. So how are you able to maintain family boundaries and were there any challenges with coming back home after school? There definitely were challenges. And mom, if you're watching this, (laughs) you know. (laughs) I struggled so much because like I said, you go from living such an independent life. I had an awesome house in Amherst. I had awesome roommates. Mm -hmm. I loved my life. Like it couldn't have gotten any better. I loved my life in Amherst. And I just was like mourning that life at first. And the boundaries came when I had to start working and working from home learned a lot (laughs) and you have to set those boundaries so one of them being like my mom wouldn't understand that I was like online right like yeah I'm sitting there like playing on my computer it would look like if you walked by my office but like I have to be online and working I'm Mm -hmm. making calls she'd be like Dasha yes can you like can you vacuum you know your room or whatever and so we had to like instill a no yelling between nine to five like (laughs) like, no for real because my mom would do the same exact thing when I was working from home too exactly I'm like is this the time you wanted to organize every pan in the house (laughs) (laughs) but I'm so grateful and lucky that I'm in a situation where like my mom is comfortable with me being at home and like 
It's so awesome. It's going a lot better than I thought, like how I would have imagined from college. I really enjoyed my time home and it's definitely a privilege to like be able to stay home and save money. I know that not everyone like has that choice and they have to move out or different things. I feel very lucky that I'm able to do that and mm -hmm. like I have that support. If I do move out, want to come back or, or things like that. So really just focusing on communicating those boundaries and figuring out what works for your family is super important. Yeah. I felt like I needed a wicked clean house. Like my mm -hmm. house is clean, but like I felt like since I was staying in it all the time, I really worked on making my office somewhere I wanted to be. I got the desk that I wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, I like changed up my room. Letting the space meet you where you're at in life was really important as well if I was going to stick it out and stay home for like six months to a year. Yeah, you have to kind of make it like your little own cute office if you're going to be there and want to yeah. enjoy it. And like coming home can be tough, but just kind of making it feel new in a way I feel like is exactly. a good way to change it up. Do you have plans to move out? So right now it's just Austin, but I've been really looking into different sublets in Boston just to see if I like it or if I did want to move somewhere else. Because that's the other thing, I'm like New York City, I Boston, know. Austin, like you where do I want to go? go? Anywhere. Go anywhere. <laughs> Yes, there's a lot of opportunity. I'm definitely seeing it through. But I'm still playing the field, kind of seeing my options. But definitely plan to move out before June. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so exciting. <laughs> this is going to be like a two-part question for you, but what's something that you miss most about college and then also something that you feel like you've gained from your post-college life? Yeah, I love that question. I miss just being in so such close proximity to all my friends. Mm -hmm. My time at UMass, I made some great friendships. I just love all my friends from there, everyone I met. And you're really never going to be within like a five minute drive of everyone ever again. Right. Scary thought. Very <laughs> scary. That's what I miss the most. But something I've gained aside from just appreciating my time with my friends is really, I think my friend group from college, we really focus on finding time to be intentional with each other and really like making plans and sticking to them and like making sure we see each other, which is the hardest, is really hard post-grad, but it a strong suit of ours now because like the other night you know we all got together and we just had pasta or you know like we missed someone's birthday so we like had like a dinner together mm -hmm. um so you can really focus on being much more intentional with the time that you spend together yes you kind of have to be yeah and did your social circle change at all or did you kind of just stay close with your friends at school make new friends and like how have you maintained those relationships yeah I think my social circle has changed a bit Sorry, I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, my social circle hasn't changed too, too much. I'm still very good friends with um, all my close friends from UMass, as well as like my hometown friends, which I've gotten even more connected with again. Just spending much more intentional time together, like I was saying, really focusing on making plans. And the biggest call out, I would say, about that is like, you ha have to put a lot of effort into making plans with those mm -hmm. friends after. It wasn't the case at UMass, right? You could just go knock on your roommate's door and just right. stand in her like room. <laughs> so, you know, you have to plan things in advance and everyone's working really late and everyone's really exhausted from working and all the other crap that we've talked yeah. about. And then in terms of making new friends, I've made a lot of new friends. I Good. love all my coworkers. They're so nice. That's so exciting. Um, if you're watching, hello, wherever you are. <laughs> you better um, be watching. Yeah. <laughs> I love everyone that I've met at my job so far. Everyone is super kind, welcoming, and like the energy is just so motivating to be mm -hmm. at. It's something that I never thought I would gain. Again, from that nine to five, I was never going to do it. And now I have these awesome friendships. I love coming into the office and seeing like the office girls, like yes. the sales girls. And I always love catching up with them. And they do feel like, you know, real and true friends that's awesome the yeah. sales culture is just amazing like yeah. you're around so many like-minded people motivated people mm -hmm. and that's where I've made most of my closest friends too so yeah. that's so exciting for you do you guys have any fun like outings that you do through work yeah so um like a few weeks ago we went to Top Golf. very oh, fun that's awesome um yeah that was really cool and then we just like like I said, we're in tech, so like the office is very fun. I thought it was so cool. We have a room full of like beanbag chairs and massage chairs and oh, ping pong awesome. tables and like. <laughs> so we're always having fun. We had a beer pong tournament in the office, but it was with wa it was water, obviously. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but like stupid fun stuff like that. It's it's really great. That's awesome. Yeah. So for anyone who is graduating soon or recently graduated, what advice would you give to them with dealing with like the emotional aspect of the transition? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the biggest focus pre-graduation should be 
soaking up every minute. Mm -hmm. I took time off the job I had then. I really focused on keeping my calendar open and just spending time with my friends, going for walks around campus. Like me and my roommates made a to-do list of things we wanted to get done before we left, like stealing a box of cereal from the dining hall. Like just stupid <laughs> shit that you I should get that. done. <laughs> yeah. Did you jump in the campus pond? No, I would never <laughs> jump in that swamp. So like I would people do. never <laughs> jump in that swamp. That's literally yeah. so <laughs> disgusting. Post-grad, I think... It's really important to just be in a time in your life where you're willing to say yes to everything. Mm -hmm. You are going to feel super distant from your friends at some times. You're going to feel distant from your career sometimes or your family or your home or every single aspect of your life. You're going to be like driving your brain nuts over analyzing it. And I think the biggest thing or most important thing to do at this time is just be open to trying new things going out, pushing yourself, you know, go out to eat alone, go do some, you know, push yourself to go into the city and commit to the things you say you're going to do. Speaking for myself, I've just adventured a lot this year and done a lot of things that I never really would have done yeah. alone. Like a few, like a month ago, I took a ballet class. I took an adult ballet class like I just for that. fun. <laughs> and it was so fun. And I met so many girls my age who were just taking their weekly adult ballet class. And I was like, driving over thinking no one was going to be there. Mm -hmm. And it was the coolest thing I've ever done. That's awesome. So just be willing to like be open, be vulnerable and willing to figure yourself out at this time is the most important thing that I can say. Yeah. I feel like being open-minded versus seeing it as a stressful thing when yeah. you're like in this new chapter of life and you're like, now what situation? I feel like being open-minded is like the best way to go about it. Yeah. I always say in the times of your life that are most chaotic is the times that you need to lean on the structure you build mm -hmm. when things are not chaotic, right? So, you know, going to your weekly therapy, still going to the gym every day, you know, being super intentional with getting outside or taking space away from your phone. You have to stick to that when things get hard. You have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like your career, identity, coming out of college. Did you ever face an identity or career crisis and how did you handle that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely I did it's like how I was just saying you know focus on the structure and the calm and then it'll lean on it in the chaos I signed up for this job in April started in July so a lot of time passed before the start mm -hmm. and I definitely had an identity crisis and I guess career crisis you could say when I started it I couldn't sit at my desk all day I I at first, when you're starting sales, you don't have a pipeline. You don't have anyone to call, really. Like, I had nothing to do, really, at the very beginning. And I was just like, fuck. Yeah. Like, I messed up. This wasn't my path. This wasn't for me. I'm not supposed to be here. I felt like I was, like, confined in a cell. And it was just such a hard, I would say it took me, like, a month or two to get out of that rut. And mm. I was just like, I don't even know who I am. Like, this wasn't me a year ago or even six months ago. You know, like, I felt so fulfilled by my time at UMass, like being a part of women in business, speaking to women entrepreneurs. You know, I was very, I was posting a lot on Days with Dasha, like I was doing sponsored content. And again, I was started my own business um, doing social media marketing for other small businesses. So I felt like the shit senior mm -hmm. year. <laughs> and, and you were. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to go from that, I don't know, like, and I don't mean this to offend anyone. I don't mean to like talk about the nine to five culture like that because now I love it. Now I'm in it and all that. But it just was not how I was like raised and mm -hmm. never my plan, I guess. So it felt like I was disappointing my family. I was like disappointing myself, my dreams, you know, that I wasn't fulfilling them. But I think that I learned that I still, first and foremost, I still do all of those things just at a much like tied back scale. But I think you just have to accept that there's different seasons of your life and you have to prioritize different things. And in this season of my life, I'm prioritizing making money. Mm -hmm. I'm prioritizing learning and I'm prioritizing stability, which is what I need if I want to get an apartment, you know, travel the world, do those things. I'm so grateful that the job that I have gives me the flexibility to do all of those things and, you know, still have my business, still keep a few clients. But it took me, you know, a while to accept that working a nine to five is not the worst thing in the world. Yeah. I love having health insurance. <laughs> um, yes. It's very nice to have those Another types plus. of things. I love everyone that I work with. I love having a group of people that I'm excited to speak to every day and engage with. And you don't get that when you own your own business or you're doing influencer marketing. It can be very isolating. Mm -hmm. So I think just accepting, you know, that not one path is going to be perfect. And the plan that I had written out initially, it's okay to deter like, 
you know, go off the script right. and figure it out later. Yeah. You know, it's nice to know I can always leave my job if I wanted to and make money on my own, but I love my job and like, I love that I can do everything right now. It feels good. That's awesome. Yeah. And so like what gave you the courage to stick it out when you felt like that career crisis in the beginning versus like redirecting your path? Yeah, I think I knew that Dasha from spring of senior year knew that there was some value in it. Mm -hmm. Knew that I wasn't the smartest person in the room, right? Knew that I still had a lot of learning to do. One of my big things that I talked about a lot senior year was I never had a corporate internship. All my internships during college were at different startups. So I'd never worked in a corporate setting. So who was I to never try it? Right. Like, who, you know? <laughs> and so I just kept remembering, like, I made this decision for a reason. Let me just try. Yeah. If in three months I still hate it, I'll deal with it then. And by like month two, and I started doing really well. And you're like, okay, <laughs> the commit, fine. You know, I was like, I was winning the spiff. I was like, okay, this feels good. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I guess just a little advice from that is really see it out and just try to see the benefit in it and yeah. remember why you started in that direction in the first place. Right? Exactly. Like giving everything a fair shot mm -hmm. is so important because... I feel like I'm a broken record with this, but everything feels so different and so new and so weird that you don't know where that weirdness is coming from. Mm -hmm. And you can't necessarily point it towards, oh, it's my career. Oh, it's my where I'm living. You know, you just have to kind of stick it out, see what works mm -hmm. and not not try 100 things and give up on everything. You know, exactly. pick a few, try it out. Mm -hmm. and see what sticks yeah and if it doesn't stick it's okay to redirect yourself like yeah. you pretty much did redirect yourself to begin with to start with this new job yep and it turned out to be great yeah so you don't have to stick on the initial path that you thought but also give other things a shot too yeah absolutely <laughs> So now you're a big girl making money, yeah. <laughs> but there are some challenges that come obviously with post-college, more finances, the need for budgeting. Yep. What tips can you give on that? Yeah. So as someone who's living home, my biggest goal was to save money. Mm -hmm. And this year I was saving money to travel and adventure um, and do those sorts of things and eventually be able to move out. So playing the long game here a bit. Coming out of college in 2023, the cost of living is extremely expensive right now in Boston. And, you know, seeing some friends move out, I think it's awesome and I'm so happy for them. But the grass is always greener where mm -hmm. like, you know, I talk about, oh, I could move out. Like I totally can. I have the money. I have the job to be able to do it. But it would stretch me so thin that it's like, what is the point at that right now? Like right. if I'm living kind of like paycheck to paycheck, but I'm, you know, living in this cool apartment, everyone thinks that rather than living at home a little bit, saving a little bit more money and being able to budget better in mm -hmm. 2024, you have to think about, you know, what's a priority for you when budgeting your paychecks, when budgeting those things. And as an adult, a lot of random expenses. Like yeah. I graduate college, car breaks down. <laughs> like, you know, coincidental. <laughs> for no reason. Like, or like I have like a five hundred dollar like medical bill or yeah. just you know, shit kinda comes up like right after that, right when you have to start paying those bills. Um, so for me it was just a priority to kind of minimize like required expenses and give myself enough like cash to still be able to do the fun things that I wanted to do. And like, I'm really lucky that I was able to live at home and do that right now. I traveled a lot. Like, I went to five different countries this year. And it really just depends what's a priority for you and what you want to do. And that will ref that should be reflected in your budget and how you save your money and how you spend your money. Okay, now I want to hear more about five different countries this year. <laughs> and just, like, advice on how to travel, you know, post-college and make the most of it. Yeah. So first thing I'm going to say, and my coworkers taught me this one, <laughs> is use your PTO. <laughs> like no one, no one needs you to be a hero and not use your paid time off. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you, you will not get any promotion or anything like that for having the most unused PTO. Yes. So definitely use it. And working in tech, most companies have unlimited PTO like myself. When I started my job, I had a wedding I had to go to in Portugal, um, kind of like three months out. I was so nervous. I was so uh. nervous to take the paid time off because I was like, is it a bad look? Like, right. what does unlimited really mean? <laughs> and things like that. But I was so happy that I did. And all my coworkers were like so excited about my trip. So I went to Portugal this past year. And what did help with the post-grad transition was I went to Europe for two weeks right after graduation. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, you know, 
I think I went like five days after moving yeah. out of Amherst and I went to like London, I went to Paris, Nice, Monaco um, and really just had a great time adventuring around. It was me and my boyfriend and that definitely eased the pain yes. of graduating because <laughs> you can't be sad in Paris. No, <laughs> oh, I'm so jealous, but I'll be there soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And for me, coming back to the priorities, that's a priority for me right now is traveling and seeing the world and having as many experiences as I possibly can. Not a priority for me right now is, you know, having an apartment mm -hmm. or, you know, having a place to live, I guess, independently, right. which is fine because it will eventually become one. The biggest thing I can say about post-grad is like you're constantly comparing your life to everyone else and you just have to accept like this is my priorities. This is what I want to do. This is what works for me. And like I can't torture myself because I can't fit into everyone else's different shoes. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. You know? And I feel like that's even a problem just like during college too. You're constantly comparing yourself to other people, you mm -hmm. know, people who are landing these internships and yep. who are doing so well at school in different clubs. And it's just important to focus on your own path. Exactly. Comparing yourself to all these people will do nothing. Mm -mm. I have my best friend, Tara. She, and I've told her this a million times, she is so amazing at not having FOMO. <laughs> it is her one skill yes. that I wish that I could develop. <laughs> like if she's committed to a plan, she, like, like, let's say all of us are going out, you know, drinking or whatever, but she wants to have a night in. Yeah. She could not care less, like, about if she's chosen to stay in, mm -hmm. she is having the time of her life. You know what I That's mean? That's awesome. And it's such like, a great for thing her. because when you don't have FOMO, you don't have that guilt. Mm -hmm. Whereas like me, if I, if I want to stay in and my friends are going, I'm like, oh my God, they're going to think that I hate them. They're going to think that I'm like such a loser. Like mm -hmm. I don't go out. But at this point in life, you cannot keep comparing yourself to people. No. And it's such a skill that you should develop before graduating if you can, but right in that post-grad time. Yeah. Yeah. So is that something you're still working on? Yes. I would definitely <laughs> say that it's a yeah. big struggle of mine. I'm definitely... <laughs> My brain's always moving at a mile a minute. I'm always thinking about, oh, what does this person think? Or what is that? Like, how does this make me look, you know? And I'm really just trying to let go of that yeah. and be at peace with, this is my path. I have to focus on what I want to do and not pleasing Sally Joe and whatever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good because you're admitting it and you're working on it. Yeah. And that's all that matters. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Rather than comparing yourself to other people and their journey, how are you staying focused on your own journey? Like I said, Full transparency, I'm always comparing and, trying, you know, thinking about what I have to do next, like what I want to accomplish. And that's just always how I've been. Like, that's mm -hmm. just me by nature. And so I have to be super intentional about slowing down, really being intentional with my goals and where I want to go. So the biggest thing for me lately has just been sitting down and writing it all down. I've noticed post-grad especially that when my brain is busy, nothing gets done and I feel super overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And it's it's so different than like being stress, stressed for an exam in college. It's it's a much different type of feeling because it's like, oh, you know, dentist appointment. Oh, I didn't submit the notes for like that op I just put through. Like, oh, I have to, you know, it's like full on adulting. Writing it all down and being really strategic about a plan on how to get where I want to go has been really helpful. And lately, full transparency like just taking a step back from social media mm -hmm. i'm starting to learn that living a private life is really nice too it is <laughs> and i don't think we're meant to see this many people's lives online no <laughs> so, <laughs> so true i like took three weeks off social media and i went uh, in that time i went to mexico with my family as well and i was like nobody knows i'm here <laughs> i don't care if anyone knows i'm here i don't care if anyone is shitting on me for taking time off yeah i'm just here you're just living life and nobody knows that i'm here <laughs> i don't know like because when you start posting and comparing and all of that and this is coming from someone who's done social media for the past three years and blogged my entire life which is super different slowing down and being more intentional with what you would want to do and stop comparing even yourself Mm -hmm. Like, how many times have you taken a picture of yourself and then, like, ripped yourself apart, like, five minutes later right. looking at the photo? <laughs> it's the same thing. Like, even when I make a life decision, I'm like, oh, my God, I shouldn't have done that, you know? Mm -hmm. Just, like, working out. Like, it's just a muscle you have to practice doing. Yeah. And I feel like if anyone is struggling with focusing on other people's journeys versus their own, I feel like a social media, like, step back is such a good thing to do for yourself. Yeah. Like, I also have taken a good, like, three weeks off social media before. Yep. And it's like, okay, ironic. Like, I'm someone who's always posting on social media yeah. just like you. But 
I needed it. And like you said, I feel like we're not meant to be on social media and seeing people's lives as much as we are yep. and in such like an unrealistic context as it is on social media. So I feel like that is such a helpful tip. Yeah. And you also have to think because I lean on my family a lot mm -hmm. and they're like, why are you so stressed? Why are you so this? You have to think like t 10, 20 years ago, like social media wasn't around comparing right. everyone's life wasn't a thing you know you heard about people's lives when you got a chance to call or see each other once a year on the holidays but now it's all at our fingertips which is a blessing and a curse you know i remember at the end of senior year dreading opening linkedin i had to take a linkedin break can you think about that <laughs> that's crazy like a linkedin but break. true <laughs> i was just i couldn't see one more person saying like i'm thrilled to share yes. that <laughs> i have accepted my job at pwc and oh i am so excited <laughs> I just couldn't do it. I struggled so hard to find yeah. a job. I applied to 100 jobs and I got this one. And I just, you know, you just have to take a step back. And I guess now as we're having this conversation, it's not just post-grad because I was feeling this way at school. Yeah. But yeah, take a LinkedIn break. <laughs> <laughs> and so we've talked a lot about your job, which I've loved to hear about. And I am curious, like, how was the process of finding a job for post-college? Yeah. So it was around October, maybe or, you know, December time where I realized, you know, I do want to get a full-time job post-grad. I spoke to some advisors at Eisenberg and they were just saying like, it's a lot of pressure to put your full business on yourself after graduation. And it would be nice to have that cash flow coming in from a, you know, a corporate job. So I opened up my heart and my path to finding a job and it sucked. <laughs> oh, it sucked. I bet like transitioning from doing everything on your own to yeah. now having a job search. And I thought I mean I know that I was a good candidate on paper like I had a 4.0 GPA I was the president of women in business like I was super involved on campus I knew I was a great person so I was like submit my resume this is right? gonna be a breeze <laughs> <laughs> um, but a hundred job applications later <sighs> and no job it was become it was like April time and I was like crying to my roommates every day like I just don't know if this is for me. I don't know what the problem is. No one's answering me. Like at the time I was talking to everyone, no one was even getting emails with no's in them. You would just get ghosted by companies. Yeah. Which is very difficult. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. So I just kind of took a step back and started meeting with people to talk about their careers mm -hmm. and learn a little bit about what different people do. Obviously I was doing it with hopes of getting a job. <laughs> so I met with a few different people and my good friend Anna introduced me to her sister Sophia who works at the Predictive Index where I work now. And Sophia and I met um, like springtime and we just talked about sales. She just told me, you know, about her day. She walked me through what she does. She was, I think she was an account executive at the time still and just told me a lot about sales and like working at PI. And I was like, okay, this is awesome, whatever. Totally forgot about it. Just learned about sales. So I was mm -hmm. like, I'll start applying for different BDR roles. And funny enough, they ended up opening a role two weeks later. So she sends it to me. She's like, you have to get your application in. I remember I was like in the student union, like <laughs> whipping it out. <laughs> <laughs> like I sent it in and they wanted me to start May 1st or, or something like that. Last week of April, I went through the whole interview process and I was like, I'm just going to work until I graduate. Like, yeah. I just have to figure it out. This is my only option. I was so excited because when they came in with the offer for me and I had made it through, the HR manager said that I could start in July. Like, I didn't even have to ask. And it was so great. And I was like, this is my sign. They extended the, you know, start date. Yeah. And I was just so excited. That's awesome. So it definitely takes time. And patience, it seems. Yeah, <laughs> so much patience. But you got to, like, leverage your network, especially while you're still at school it slows down a lot when you're outside of school and to get people's time and to get them on the phone, it's so hard after school. So really try to do everything that you can with the resources that you have. Yeah, you can yeah. only submit so many applications, but it's like yeah. having those conversations with people can be so valuable, whether it's just learning like their genuine opinions on the company itself or the position itself or landing yourself a position yeah. just by having that conversation. Yeah, and it's so normal for people to get referred. Like I... I don't know that I would have gotten this job had Sophia not referred me to the right. job. So having the power of someone who's already there is so vital. Mm -hmm. Happy to connect with anyone on LinkedIn <laughs> here who wants to talk about I know, sales. Let's chat later. <laughs> <laughs> and what you also have to remember is people who work at big companies are incentivized to refer people. Right. A hire that's referred is like drastically uh what is it? What is the word I'm looking for? Gonna stay longer at the company. Right. People want to refer people, you know? So talk to people 
see people who are in careers that you like, different industries that you like, just talk to them about what they do. People yeah. love to talk about themselves. Mm-hmm. You know? They do. <laughs> so now you're working the nine to five, which you weren't expecting. Mm-hmm. How has your schedule changed from college and how do you go about work-life balance? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm a big advocate for work-life balance and like mm-hmm. mental health and all of that. And I don't think I would have stuck at a job that didn't support me in all of those things. And I can speak really highly of my company that they're super respectful of, you know, when someone's logged off, you don't message them. Like you give them their time off. Or when I am on PTO, like nobody bothers me, you know, I mean, we're not doing brain surgery, first of all. Right. So <laughs> it's like nothing's really that big of an emergency, but I'm really lucky. And I think a big reason of why it worked out for me is because I work at a company, um, that, you know, I can step and take like a mental, like a little break from my computer if I just need to like unplug or if I had a bad call, like no one's like, why hasn't your uh, keyboard moved in 20 minutes? You know what I mean? I I could never do that. So I think that's really important is working at a place that has boundaries that you're comfortable with and Mm -hmm. rules that you're okay with abiding by. My schedule shifted a lot. Like I said, one of the biggest hurdles was just sitting at my desk from nine to five. Mm -hmm. You don't have to really do that. Once you're like kind of in the role, you can get up (laughs) and like go take a walk or or something like that. But I have a little walking pad in my office and yeah. (laughs) And the biggest thing for me was just getting up in the morning and going to work out before I sit at my desk. Yes. Which I love a good morning workout, but to get up at like six o'clock every day, it sucks. It's tough. And then on the weekends, you can't really sleep in because your body's like trained. Mm -hmm. But I have to be so disciplined with it because I just have a bad day if I don't. You know, I'll go out and go take like a 645 class somewhere, go do something like that. I usually get to my desk by like 830, 845. And it just like kicks off your day great. And what else I do appreciate about my company is I'm able to manage my calendar on my own. So if I need an hour at the end of the day to take notes or catch up on things, like I can block that off. And I can just say like, you know, this is my time for me and like all the shit I have to get done. And everyone respects that. So I think it's twofold, like working at a place you like and also being able to unplug when you need to and acknowledging that. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people prioritize sometimes like making a lot of money and having this really great job Mm -hmm. over their own personal time and end up in jobs after college where they're just so burnt out. And so do you have any advice for like steering clear of that in a way? Yeah. So I kind of came into this, you know, like last month or the other month, I was like, I had to take a mental health day. Like I had to take a Friday off, which I had never done. I was just saving up my time for vacations and whatever I wanted to do. And I was just like, I couldn't hear the phone ring one more time. Yeah. And I, I just, <laughs> just, I really couldn't. I was like, and I was so shocked and I was talking to one of my teammates and she was like, I usually schedule in like a mental health day every five weeks in advance. Cause I had to do it all last minute cause I wasn't feeling well and all that. So I think just acknowledging that the burnout happens so quickly Mm -hmm. and it's almost like right when you're peaking, it's like you need it right then. Yeah. Because once you hit the floor, like, no. Yeah. (laughs) And with me, something that I'm working on in terms of work-life balance is I'm like, love checking slack while i'm out of the office it's horrible <laughs> i love doing it <laughs> yep i am always reading it it's like on my phone and i just need to not i know and it takes discipline to be bored and like not engage with what's going on at work but that's what i'm working on right now yeah <laughs> no i feel like a lot of people do fall into that too or your email right when you get out of bed yeah that's the hardest I do one that. i do that all the time and that is so not a good thing even just like Right when you get out of bed, you shouldn't even be looking at your screen for like the first at least 30 minutes of your day. Yeah. You just need to be present. Yeah. (laughs) Do you do that? I've been really working on just taking the first 30 minutes of my day to absolutely not look at my phone. But it is something I'll admit that I struggle with. Like I'll not want to get out of bed. I'll turn over. I'll grab my phone and then I'll scroll on it. And that is a terrible way to start your day. Yeah. So I feel like just making it a priority to not look at your phone for the first 30 minutes and not check your emails, Mm -hmm. not check anything having to do with work that's going to stress you out and put you to a bad start is like so important. Yeah. Do you use your phone as an alarm? Yes. See, that's my problem because I'm like, okay, solution (laughs) is to sleep with my phone, you know, charge it in the office or in the kitchen while I'm sleeping. I feel like I'm missing like a leg if I don't have it right next to I me. I know. You know it's what I tough. mean? It's it's very strange. So, so maybe we need to switch to like a yeah. <laughs> alarm clock or something. 
<laughs> I don't know, but we got to find the solution. Because it's bad. It is. No, I, I really do struggle with it too. But I feel like when I was doing a social media cleanse, that was like really when I was absolutely not checking my phone in the mornings just because I was in that time of detoxing. Yeah. And that just did so much for me, just getting off to such a more productive and like positive start in the morning. Yeah. Do you ever listen to music in the morning? Sometimes if I'm like making breakfast, yeah. I'll like put some tunes on. I think music is okay. I love <laughs> I love listening to music in the mornings, especially when I'm alone. Yes. Um, like in college, I was always, I'm an early bird. So I was always mm-hmm. the first of my roommates up. And I would just put my headphones on. Like yeah. I have these nice headphones. And I would just like listen to like, very chill mm-hmm. Taylor Swift music I was making my breakfast and yeah it's just like such a nice way to start the day yeah just a thought <laughs> just a thought <laughs> so I'm curious what personal goals do you have moving forward for adulthood and your future just like what is getting you excited yeah I definitely have a lot of different goals <laughs> <laughs> I just like when 2020 when a new year comes I just have this like new fire under my yes. butt to just like attack everything and so I'm really excited for 2024 I think it's going to be just such a great year and I have goals like on every end of things like personal financial fitness my fitness goal has been <laughs> to be to do one chin up <laughs> and I have not hit it and it's it's so, tough it's so tough <laughs> great goal to have my brother was like you literally could train for three weeks and like get it and I was like it just always gets put to the back burner yeah but 2024 2024, you'll see me doing a chin up my big focus is two things is I really would like to get promoted and move up like the sales funnel and the sales process so I that's a goal that Mm -hmm. I hope to achieve yes and then my this is ambitious I've told a few people this but I would like to make a hundred thousand dollars next year yeah so that's my goal um we're gonna see how I get there um between reviving days with Dasha and my social media business and of course my my day job Mm -hmm. that's how I kind of plan to get there and that's the beauty of sales you create your income you work as hard as you want you succeed how you want to and so exactly i i have all faith yeah (laughs) (laughs) and for anyone who's considering sales i think the scariest part about signing up for the job was the commission-based structure Mm -hmm. it freaks a lot of people out but i think if you have a company that creates an environment where people are motivated and the comp plan is good there's really nothing to worry about right and it's like you said it's like the harder you're willing to work, you know, the more money and reward you're going to get most of the time. Mm-hmm. You're not rewarded just like everyone else you're working with. Yeah. So it's, I love, I love being in sales <laughs> and it's just so, I love all the competitions. Yes. All that no, stuff. that's such an exciting goal. Yeah. Personally, a big focus for 2024 is moving out mm-hmm. and getting my own apartment. It's always been a dream. I remember when I was like struggling really hard in high school with like, you know, life shit. I always said, I'm going to have a beautiful apartment. And instead of cups, I'm going to have tons of mason jars. And it's going to be filled with (laughs) light. Why was that like everyone's goal in high school? Like the mason jars. I I, like, I love mason jars. (laughs) Like not in a weird, not in like a weird circa like polka dots, Pinterest, like that type of vibe. Like I just love jars. I don't know. Um, (laughs) So that was always my big dream. And I really hope that I tackle that dream in 2024 for and just really cultivate a space that brings me joy i've learned from living at home that Mm -hmm. you know where i am physically really contributes to my mood really contributes to my mental health my like anxiety levels overall bringing together a space that makes me really happy with furniture that i love and with people that i love i love hosting Mm -hmm. and i am so excited to have an apartment to be able to do that that'll be Um, amazing yeah so Different goals like that. What are your goals? What are you? What are you? I feel like I've talked the whole time. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm not post grad yet, but yeah. I definitely have a lot of goals. I agree that like every time a new year comes, I'm just like so excited to like shoot for so many big goals. It's just like a new beginning, fresh start like moment for me. Mm-hmm. Just feel like right now my main focus is just growing independently and like I'm going abroad so with the new year like I just want to have so many new experiences obviously coming back and having some sort of job this summer that leads into something for me post-grad and that goes really well and just kind of going in that path but yeah just learning more about myself overall yeah (laughs) as you should like the boundaries of college like you're very supported you can Mm -hmm. take a lot of risk and so many people told me that and I was taking risk and I wish I took even more exactly going abroad so amazing yeah you're gonna love it you're gonna have so much fun I'm so excited yeah do you have anything else planned for the new year well, Texas, I'm very excited and nervous <laughs> about moving to Texas. I, I, that's crazy. This is the first I'm hearing. I, I know. I haven't told anyone because I'm like living my private life, as yes. I told you. 
<laughs> we're making it public. <laughs> it's public now. You're the first to know. I've not even told some of my like extended friends. Yes. Only my close, close friends know. <laughs> I'm excited to explore a new city. Yeah. I'm definitely nervous. I mean, I've hey, never nerves been. are going to come with something yeah, like that. Yeah, like good nerves. Trying to plan my travel plans for the next year. It's definitely going to be tough. I'm like a realist, so it's definitely tough to plan to get my big girl apartment mm -hmm. with all my mason jars and travel <laughs> to a few countries. Yeah. So there might be some give and take in those goals. But aside from that, just really focusing on doing what I want to do is my... 2024 is the year yes. of me, I think. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that you're doing yeah. so well. This was awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Anything else you want to add? I just, I'm so grateful to be here. This is so cool. <laughs> Reese is so cool. Oh my God. The set here is freaking awesome <laughs> and she's like the kindest human and i hope oh. you can all feel that through the camera so. dasha is the best i hope you can all feel that i hope <laughs> you loved this guest i had today because i did yeah. and i hope you guys all learned a lot whether you've graduated or haven't yet this is advice that's going to help a lot of you guys out so i'm excited i had you on thank you um, but guys keep listening keep watching come on the podcast and we will see you guys next time bye bye <laughs>